Okay, welcome to another program exam solution tutorial for this year's Comp 1 exam. And um, we're going to look at validating the key for the Caesar cipher. So by the end of this, hopefully you'll know where to stick the validation. Um, we're going to look at a couple of checks. And uh, we'll briefly look at how to test that validation. Now, my usual assumptions are that you've got a vague idea of what's going on with this year's exam. And... For this one, I'm also going to expect that you know how the Caesar cipher works. I've done a video on that. And also that you know how validation works in general. So for the Caesar cipher key validation, um, really the only two checks I can see coming up are a range check and a type check. So obviously we want it to be a number. VB in particular is pretty sloppy about converting decimal numbers into integers. But uh, I really want to check that it's an integer. And oh, the range check, there's a. It could be whatever range they specify, but I guess 0 and 25 will be sensible. Minus 25 to 25 is, is also sensible. Although, you know, they could exclude zero, I guess. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to the testing after we've, we've looked at the code. Okay, here we are with the um, secret messages code. And I'm hoping you're pretty familiar with this. And we're going to assume that we've already got some plain text from the user and that they're going to select case G, which is apply the Caesar cipher. So encrypt for Caesar cipher. If we just looked here, Caesar cipher. So for the encrypt. And when they select G, uh, it displays the plain text, which is great. And then the very next thing it does is call this function so that it can pass the key to this encryption function, basically. So what we'll do is we'll go down to there, so go to definition, and it is this function here that we are going to um, change. And we'll do it exactly the same as before. <laughs> it is a genuine version, honest. Uh, we're going to uh, change it exactly as before by uh, putting in a do loop and keep looping until we get a valid, answer, uh, a valid input. So we'll start off by creating a Boolean. And we're going to call it valid key. Why not? Um, and that's how I'm effectively going to assess my loop. So now effectively I've put this input inside a loop and I'm going to keep looping until until the valid key boolean is true. Um, and now what I'm going to do is uh, set that valid key to be false within the loop so that every time the loop goes round we start off with the valid key being set to false. So effectively um, our validation process is going to try and set valid key to be true if the key is valid. Seems to make sense, doesn't it? And we'll do that with a little if statement. And we're going to put in a boolean expression here and then basically put our true and false elements inside the if statement. So let's do that. Um, I've decided to go for the minus 25 to 25 range. I could have chosen 0 to 25. Obviously it will be completely dependent on what they ask you to do in the exam. They they almost certainly won't ask you to make a decision on what that range should be. I'd, I'd fully expect them to tell you what range they would want. Uh, just notice that um, I tend to explicitly put greater than equal to and less than equal to rather than using greater than and changing this number by 1. It just, just makes it slightly clearer when someone else is reading. And don't forget to include the variable in each uh, bit of the Boolean expression. Right, better stick in um, valid key equals true in the correct bit of the validation, and valid key equals false with a bit of user with a bit of user dialog in the other one. So hopefully this construct now makes sense that if the key is between minus twenty five and twenty five, the valid key will be equal true. If it's not, then um, the key must be, we're asking for the key to something else, set it to false. Obviously, we're assuming at this stage that we have got um, 
an input of the correct type being entered. That might not be true, so we better put in a try catch statement um, outside this. So let's whack in try there and catch there. So all of the work we've just done is in the try bit of a try catch statement. And in the catch, I'm going to need to do another valid key equals false bit to it. Bonk. Right, there we go. And that is now our complete validation. We've got a try catch statement with the input and all the other logical validation taking place within the try. In the catch, I've got my what's effectively a type check. Um, and I've just got a blanket statement saying this is what I want. And I've, I'm setting the valid key to be equal to false in both of the incorrect sections. And if we were to test that now, that, that would work. Um, all of my solutions I'm whacking into paste bins, so you can always, if you don't want to bother typing this in yourself, you can always get it from there and test it. But um, let's run this and just do a, a couple of quick checks. Okay, I'm just checking running. Yep. Uh, okay, I'll just pause that for a second. I've run the code and you can see that I've typed in hello world. Right, we're now going to go to encrypt G for the Caesar cipher and um, it's displayed hello world and let's just pick a sensible one, five and we can see it is encoded. Of course, I would need to hand trace that to make sure that um, it, it has worked correctly. Uh, that's something that I could fully expect the masher to do. But if I was to go for a, a sensible one, let's say H, um, I, J, K, L, M, that's five. So I can see it's setting that first character is correct. Um, right, let's do G again. Should have still kept the hello world. Let's do a minus number. Um, let's, let's, in fact, let's do the extreme. Let's do minus 25. Seems to work. I'm not going to hand trace that. G, let's do... Um, 50. So this should actually ask me to re-enter the number. Lovely, key must be between 21 and lovely. And let's do uh, minus 50, seems to be good. Lovely, and let's try Bob. And you can see that my message is different. So in, in that little thing I've tested um, valid data, extreme data, and some erroneous data. Uh, I suppose I ought to really check 25, the other the other extreme, and that's also worked. So those are all the checks I could ever possibly ask to make um, sensibly. Obviously you need to be a little bit careful that um, the range might be different, so keep your eyes open for that. But this particular check is, you know, is, is pretty possible. Obviously an almost identical one could be used for the rail fence as well. Uh, hopefully you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions you can always add a comment to the end of this video.